Welcome back to PSC's Tech Byte. Today we start a new series of episodes about PMP.js with the SharePoint framework. PMP.js is a collection of uh, fluent API libraries that you can use uh, to consume uh, Microsoft SharePoint, Microsoft Graph, uh, and generally speaking, the Office 365 uh, REST APIs. It has been built uh, using TypeScript uh, and with the client-side uh, development model in mind, and you can use uh, it easily with SharePoint Framework, with Node.js, and generally speaking, with uh, JavaScript. It is an open source project, and in this slide you can see the URL of the main page of the PMPJS project, and it is community driven. So a really, really nice piece of technology produced by the community. In the PMPJS model, we have a bunch of modules that you can use. So depending on what is your target, you should import with NPM the package that you want to use. For example, if you want to consume SharePoint, for example, in SharePoint Framework, you will have to import the add PMP slash SP module. In fact, if you want to use PMPJS in SharePoint Framework targeting SharePoint, that's what you have to do. npm install uh, at pmp slash sp, then you will have to import the namespace of PMPJS. You will have to set up the sp object of PMPJS for SharePoint, and then you can enjoy the PMPJS library. So let me show you in practice how to do that with a sample demo. So let's say that you want to create a SharePoint Framework web part, uh, which internally will rely on PMPJS. First of all, you have to install the package, so npm e at pmp slash sp dash dash save to save in the package dot JSON file the reference to the PMPJS library. Right now, at the time of this recording, we have version 2.0.2. Moreover, uh, in order to uh, set up uh, your uh, SharePoint object uh, in PMPJS, uh, you will need to import uh, the SP object, for example, from at PMP SP preset all uh, namespace. And you will have to set up uh, the SP object providing the context uh, of SharePoint framework. In order to do that, for the sake of simplicity, in this web part, I'm simply providing the context of SPFX to the React component through the uh, properties interface uh, of the React component. This is not always uh, a best practice because it will be quite expensive for you to create a mockup uh, of your uh, React component if you assume to get the uh, SPFX context as an input. But now I want to focus my attention on PMPJS and not on the SPFX part of the story. So I simply do sp.setup uh, this props uh, dot context to get the SPFX context. And then in the component dot, uh, did mount, I also load the current uh, context information, which means that I will use PMPJS to get information about the current user and about the current web. It's really simple and easy. You can use the async await pattern. You can access the SP object dot web and with the fluent API dot current user, you will get a reference to the current user. You can specify what are the properties that you want to select for that user and then you fire a get request, which will make an actual HTTP request to the target REST API of SharePoint. You will get back an iSite user info, which is still a type defined in PMPJS. And you can easily read the login name or any of the properties that you selected to uh, load with the uh, HTTP request that you fired with this get. As you can see, these are the main properties of a user object that you can uh, select and get. Same story for the web object. So sp.web, you select the ID and the title, for example, of the web object, you make a get, you wait for the asynchronous request, and you will get back an iWeb info object, still defined in PMPJS. And by doing that, you can then read the title of the site. In the React component, uh, we simply see if we are loading data or not. If we are still loading, we just write loading. Otherwise, we simply uh, output the value of the site title and of the, of the login name. So let me run this uh, solution locally in my uh, debug environment. And let me go to the uh, workbench of SharePoint Online. So it is now ready. Let me switch to the workbench. Here I have the web part which is already running. As you can see, I can refresh it. And you can see that we have the site title and the user login name. 
Moreover, here in the trace uh, network trace window, we can see that we have the requests made by PMPGS. So when I get the current user, because I selected to have the ID, the title and the login name, this is the URL of the request that PMPGS will fire. Uh, the same story applies for the web object. So I have web dollar select using the open data protocol and I get uh, only the ID and the title of the site because that's what I'm requesting in my source code. It's a really, really simple solution just to show you the uh, initial step to start playing with PMPJS. In the upcoming episodes, we will use PMPJS in more advanced scenarios and you will learn how you can leverage it to build a really powerful solutions built on top of SPFX and SharePoint Online in this case. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.